So we'll look at uh, a couple of different versions of interpolation. In particular, we'll look at, we'll look at two versions of, of interpolation. One will be a regular polynomial interpolation, which we've actually already seen before. Um, but then we'll realize that this isn't actually a good uh, solution in general. And then we'll go to um, splines as a way to do interpolation. It's also based on polynomials, so um, it will be very similar but it will have significant advantages over regular polynomial interpolation. So just to remind um, you what the problem of interpolation is about, so if we have a function where we know the functional values at specific points x sub i, um, but we don't know the function itself, how can we write a function that reproduces the functional values y sub i at points x sub i uh, but it is continuous and that we can then use in other words to uh, to take numerical derivatives to take integrals over to find roots and maxima and minima from um, and to uh, um, to plot as uh, as a, a curve with a larger number of points not just at the points um, x sub i and y sub i so interpolation refers to a procedure that gives us that function f of x or y of x um, that returns the true values of the function at the points x sub i, uh, but that returns interpolated values between those points x sub i. So the first method is polynomial interpolation. Um, and we've looked at this before when we wrote these um, Lagrange functions or Lagrange cardinal functions, we call them h sub i, um, which are one um, at point x sub i um, and zero at all other points x sub j where j is different from i. Um, so those functions, if we combine them with the functional value y sub zero, for example, h sub zero times y sub zero will return the, will, will return y sub zero at the point x sub zero and will return zero otherwise. Um, and if we sum for all of the points y zero through y n minus one, if we sum all of those values, um, then we have a function now by construction y of x that will return the, the, the values y0 at x0, y1 at, y at x1, all the way through y n minus 1 at x n minus 1. Also by construction, this is a polynomial. As you can see, there's uh, just um, factors of x in, in the numerator, the denominator has uh, just constant values that only depend on the values of uh, x sub i, um, the set of points at which we, uh, we calculate our function, uh, at which we know our, uh, our function, our functional values. Um, so this is a polynomial by construction. And the other thing you'll see is that this is a polynomial of order n minus one by construction. Each term is of order n minus one. So if we look at a specific case, um, linear interpolation between two points x sub i and x i sub i plus one. Um, if we look at this uh, expression above here, and we can uh, simplify that um, significantly because we only have two points, that means that each um, term will have uh, an, an x to the power one dependent, so it will be a linear term. So that will be our first term, that will be our second term, um, and if we combine that um, and write it differently, we'll see that there's one term that depends just on a sub i and a term that depends only on, uh, on y sub i and one term that depends on y sub i plus one. And uh, both of those depend on, uh, um, on x, so we end up with a linear dependence between um, y sub i and uh, y sub i plus one. Okay, so that's linear interpolation as a special case of the general polynomial interpolation um, that goes through all of our points x sub i, um, y sub i, and uh, that has an order um, n minus 1. So that's polynomial interpolation.